Let's do a quick check. Have you ever been or are you in a relationship now? Let's see a show of hands. How many of you are married? Next question. You don't have to respond to that if your partner is sitting next to you. Is your relationship always easy? We all experience the conflicts or disagreements, yes? But the interesting thing is that we start our relationship because we want to love and be loved. But then something goes wrong. Relationship hazards hinder us from building or maintaining a caring and loving intimate relationship. So today, I'd like you to join me in an attempt to tackle these problems along the journeys of intimacy. Running intimate relationships is similar to how a CEO runs a business. A great CEO communicates openly, has emotional awareness, and organizes expectations rationally. But a bad CEO acts differently, which is pretty much the same in badly run relationship. What do I mean? Let me introduce you to the bad CEO who might sometimes be running your relationship. I've been married for over two years, but I've been struggling with relationships for over 30 years. From my personal experience and observation of other people's intimate relationships, I noticed that there are three things that damage the relationship the most. I define them, the CEO hazards. What are they? Conflict, especially the silent conflict. Emotional non-responsiveness. Overwhelming expectations. Let's dive into the first story of silent conflict. Friends of mine, Sue and Bob, have been in their relationship for one year. For their first anniversary, Sue got dressed up beautifully and lovingly prepared a gift. But Bob didn't show up, didn't call. Even worse, he didn't answer her calls. Do you think this is going to go well for Bob? Filled with worry and fury, Sue drove to his house to find out what had happened. Bob arrived home at midnight, a bit worse for wear. Sue confronted him. Where were you? How could you not show up on our first anniversary? Bob explained it hesitantly. Sweetheart, I'm truly sorry. My boss insisted I accompany him at a business event. Please, let me make it up to you. Instead of talking it through, Sue stormed out, slammed the door, and there began a week of silent conflict which I'm sure you know can be more challenging than an open argument. How would you react if you were Sue? What would you do to make it right if you were Bob? I'm sure you will agree with me that silent conflict is a huge hazard in intimate relationships. But then, so is the next hazard. Emotional non-responsiveness. Show of hands, have you ever argued over whose family you should spend a new year with? Did you feel your partner really saw what you needed? Picture the scene. It was Mrs. Chu's first time celebrating the new year at her husband's family. She was uncomfortable and anxious. And on top of that, she did all the cooking, but Mr. Chi happily chatted to his family doing nothing. Burnt out and frustrated, she said to him, why didn't you do anything with me? He blurted out, you didn't ask. You can imagine how that fight escalated, especially when she reminded him of how little support he was given to her and how she supported him whenever they visited her family. At this point, Mr. Chu had a choice to not to respond to her emotions or to hear them and respond accordingly. Luckily, he listened to her and he noticed how he had been intentionally 
neglecting her emotional needs, and failing to meet her expectations. So for the following days, he proactively cooked with her, supported her to socialize with his family. Even better, he decided to take her back to her hometown and spend a few days there. How would you like your partner to be as emotionally responsive to you? We know that the former two hazards block us from building a great intimate relationship. But the final CEO hazard is a big one, overwhelming expectations. My relationship was full of CEO hazards, but overwhelming expectations almost ruined everything when we started new home decoration. Ever been through this? He expected me to be on top of everything. And he got disappointed whenever we struggled to agree on things like designing st styles or choosing materials. What's worse was my efforts went to waste if he had other ideas. And this went on for months. It was hard. I tended to stay silent to avoid the conflicts. He didn't respond to my emotional needs, and I kept feeling the pressure of his overwhelming expectations. Friends, overwhelming expectations. Please bear in mind that excessive expectations will ruin your intimate relationship. So how do we adjust the CEO hazards? Like I mentioned earlier, we need to behave like a great CEO. How? Communicate openly, have emotional awareness, and organize its expectations rationally. Silent conflict. That is the most detrimental communication barrier that hinders the understanding and conflict resolution. For Sue and Bob, they didn't break the silent conflict until Bob brought a gift and met Sue, and they had a heart-to-heart -heart chat discussing about their feelings and thoughts. To cope with the silent conflict, be open with each other, discuss the thoughts, and address problems. Every situation has a solution. It is vital and necessary to communicate openly and work through problems together. Believe it or not, there is nothing more important than feeling understood and seen. When Mr. Chi noticed how he had neglecting his wife's emotional needs and found ways to make it up to her, their relationship became happier. Emotional awareness needs to be provided proactively, either in words or in action. When your partner comes home, ask how their day went by. Respond to their joys or fears. When your loved one asks you for help, provide the best support you can. Bear in mind, you can nurture and strengthen your intimate relationship by having emotional awareness. So open communication, having emotional awareness, they are all important to run your intimate relationship. It is also vital to organize expectations rationally. Don't expect too much of your partner. Be responsible for your own dreams and aspirations. And always do it ahead. Friends, we all want our intimate relationship to thrive just like a business. So we need to make sure the right CEO is running it if you want to avoid the CEO hazards. To nurture a loving and caring intimate relationship, don't let silent conflict ruin your relationship. Instead, communicate openly. 
don't be emotionally non-responsive. Instead, be aware of your partner's emotional needs and never let overwhelming expectations damage your intimate relationship. Instead, make an effort to organize expectations. Now, friends, do you believe that communicating openly, being emotionally aware, and organizing expectations will improve your intimate relationship, do you? Yeah. Great. Here is to avoiding the CEO hazards and having the right CEO reigning your love life. Thank you.